Hey, fourth graders, how are you? Guess what? We're still having our baby cakes. Each week, I will post a new video on YouTube for you, which you'll look up and you'll have a lesson just like we do normally, all right? So this is what I want you to do today. I want you to get a piece of paper, newspaper, something to put on your kitchen table or wherever you're working so you don't get it messy. Then I want you to get a pack of markers, different colors, a pencil and eraser, and a piece of paper. If it's a piece of paper from the computer, a copy paper, that's fine, or sketchbook paper. Um, and then I will meet you back here, all right? Peace, baby, I'll see you soon. Hey, did you ever think that I'd be sitting at my kitchen table teaching you art? I mean, this is bizarre, bizarre. Who would have ever thought I'd be filming art in my kitchen? Not me. Not me, but you know what? Hey, it's kind of cool. It's kind of crazy. But it is surreal. Never did I ever think this would happen. Does anyone know what surreal means? Surreal. You ever heard that word? Maybe some of you have. Surreal is sort of like the word bizarre. And it means that it's like a bizarre mix of elements which make no sense. It's like putting things together like a flying bird wearing a helmet while chewing gum. What? That doesn't even make sense. Or maybe if you see a dog flying in the air dropping ice cream cones on top of our head. What? That doesn't even make sense. Did you know that there are artists that are called surrealists and it's based from the word surreal and they make bizarre paintings. I thought that this was a really good time to introduce surrealism to you. You know why? Because many people in the world are saying that the two weeks that we've gone through have been surreal. They're saying that the whole two weeks that we've been dealing with this coronavirus feels like they're in a dream, like they can't wake up. Everything is surreal. What a great time for me to talk about surrealist artists too, for you. So there's this dude by the name of Salvador Dali and he was a surrealist artist. And he loved to put the most unexpected combinations together. Surrealist artists, it's almost as if they're not thinking at all. It's like they're, dran they're drawing random images in, in different places. It's like, it's kind of like what you do. Well, I don't know if many people do this anymore, but if you've ever been on the phone talking and you've been doodling on a piece of paper and you're really not thinking, but you end up with the strangest things that you've drawn on the paper, maybe you've done that. Maybe you've been doodling when you weren't supposed to in maybe math class or English class and you doodle things when you should be listening, but you're actually drawing. And then you look at what you drew and you're like, well, what was I, well, what was that about? Kind of like the unconscious part of your mind is making art. That is what surrealism is. I am going to be showing you some still paintings that I want you to look at right now, okay? So when you move on, there'll be a painting. Stop the video and I want you to look at those paintings and I want you to ask these questions what objects are in the painting, number one. Number two, do these objects have anything to do with each other? Do they belong together? Number three, if you were to explain the painting or does the painting have a story, what would the story be? And then ask someone in your family to explain the painting to you. Okay, and then I'll meet you back. Get ready. By the way, there's some pictures of Salvador Dali. 
check out his stash. He was an eccentric dude, let me tell you. See you soon. Hey, so what'd you think? Did any of you recognize any of his paintings? The melting clock, maybe? Yeah, that's actually called The Persistence of Memory. And it's one, well, it is his most famous painting and it is considered um, a masterpiece. And Dali, who was Spanish, um, often gave detailed yet incorrect interpretations of his work in order to confuse people. He wanted people to come up with their own interpretations based on their own life. Um, he wanted them to find their own meaning based on their own experiences. So we will really never know what his paintings mean because he's given so many different descriptions and explanations and interpretations. So what was your interpretation? What did you think about the picture, his, his pictures of himself with the cat and the mustache? He was very eccentric, just an eccentric, eccentric man. I hope that you Google some of his works because I think you'll get a big kick out of seeing um, some of the other works that he painted. He had, I think he painted over like, you know, 1500 paintings. There's a lot out there. So, I thought it would be fun to think about what we're all going through with the virus today and our lives being quarantined and how this has kind of cramped our style. Like, my goodness, we are, you know, we're not doing what we normally want to do. And we all may have different perspectives about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll be curious to see what your perspective is when we get back. So let's get ready to combine surrealism and perspective for a really interesting project. So get ready, sit down, get your pencil and paper ready. Okay, so let's talk about perspective and drawing. Perspective of drawing is what gives a three-dimensional feeling to a flat piece of paper or a canvas. Um, there are specific rules that you use in perspective drawing um, that you follow. And it's, you know, you show lines or objects that will appear smaller or closer together or further away to the viewer. And this is all done with how the artist draws the lines, the objects, and even colors. Optical illusions are created from perspective rules of drawing. Um, a person's perspective. You know, a person's perspective means it's a person's mental view of something. Just like there are many different ways to draw perspective in art, there are so many perspectives that people can have in life, different views on topics. Just like the news on TV, everybody's got a perspective, uh, a different perspective on, okay. So perspective and drawing. We need to talk about that a little before we start. What is perspective? Does anyone know? Well, perspective means um, it's what gives artwork three dimension. It makes a flat piece of paper or a canvas feel like it is three dimensional, like you could walk into it or grab it. They are very specific rules of drawing lines or objects that will make objects look smaller or closer together or further away from the viewer. 
the viewer is the person looking at the artwork. And there are many different ways and many rules to follow for perspective. Optical illusions, um, that is created from perspective line drawing. And, you know, I love this because people have so many different perspectives about what is going on in the world right now. You've got newspapers and television and radio. Everybody has a different perspective, just like our line drawings. So I thought this was a perfect marriage to start this project. Well, get your pencil out, baby cakes. Well, welcome back. So for our project, I call this a don't box me in because here you have this image of a person pushing on the walls and it looks like it's a room closing in on him. Does that remind you of maybe how some of us feel right now? Not being able to go outside and run around with our friends and do the things that we like to do. This might be a little similar to how you feel inside your head. And I thought that maybe this would be a nice project to do to sort of release those feelings a little bit. And you can see we've got our perspective drawing and we've got this sort of a surrealism sort of image, okay? So the way that we're gonna start this, it's quite easy. Um, have your paper um, vertical and in the middle of the paper, I would like you to draw a square. Okay, and try to make it even right in the middle. Try to have the same amount of space on this side that you do here. Okay, draw down, and down, okay. So here we have our, well, it's a little bit of a rectangle too, but that's fine. That'll work just as well, okay? Now what I want you to do is I would like you to connect all of the lines to the corners. So take it down, one, two, three, four. If you wanna use a ruler, you can go ahead, but I'm not gonna use a ruler for this. So now you can kinda of see we have the beginning of the perspective of the room. Here's the floor, here's the walls, and here's the ceiling in the back wall. So that's the beginning of it. How simple was that, huh? So now what we're going to do is I'm going to draw a line going from here, and then I'm gonna bring it down to here, and then I'm gonna come over to here, and I'm gonna bring it down to here. So I want your, oops, let's make that a little straighter. Okay, erase that line, okay? So you've got why another box around this box. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. One line, two line, three line, and I'm gonna connect it again. So now we've got more boxes, and I'm gonna do another box around, and I'm gonna go up and up, okay? So you see all the boxes? We have our first box, our second box. Just make sure all the boxes, the corners touch the diagonal line. That's the most important part. That every horizontal line touches a diagonal line. Every vertical line touches a line and they meet right at the diagonal. Okay. You know, you can always turn this video off and stop and then have a go again. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna draw a line straight down the middle from the box and skip over the box so it's an even line and go this way. And then we're gonna go from this side, jump over the box and then continue it here. Never draw inside of the box. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw, I'm gonna split these two in half the section and I'm gonna draw another. Don't draw a straight line. Draw a diagonal line and another diagonal line. It's very important that the lines up on each side of the middle line are diagonal. Same thing, diagonal, diagonal. That is a perspective rule. 
So these lines, you've got your straight line in the middle, the lines on each side must be go out. Same thing here. You've got your straight line here, diagonal, diagonal. Go to this side, diagonal, diagonal. And you have the beginning of your room closing in. So now I want you to look at this. This is how we create our color grid. If you look really closely, you can see where I did X's. I actually did XOXO, so I would know where I was going to color. So it's very simple. You see these little shapes inside each box? You start there. X, O, X, O, X, O, X, O. X, O, X, O, X, O, X, O, X. Then you start the opposite. What is that? You're gonna do the opposite of that one, which would be what down here? O, O, X, 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 O, X. Okay, but do the opposite down here. What would that be? You've got X, O, so what's gonna be the opposite? X. Now, you keep going around. This one would be O. I'll meet you back when you finish. You do not have to write the X's and the O's as dark as I did. I did it so you could see it. Hey, welcome back. So now you know where your colors are gonna go. And you can choose two colors. Um, you can see that I chose yellow and green. All my yellows were the X's and my greens were the O's. You choose whatever colors you want. I decided to do warm or cool and warm, but you can do whatever combination that you want. And I did write these really, really dark. I really don't want you to. I was hoping, um, you know, write them lightly just so you have a little, you know, a little message to yourself where you're going to do the colors. So let's draw the man. The man is very simple, or the girl. What I did was I drew the head to the left, okay? And then I tilted a line down for the back leg, okay? And then I put a line this way for the other leg. I put an arm up here. And then I took an arm down there and brought it up. I made a stick figure, okay? And then you can make the stick figure. Here is his body. You can put some meat on him and you can create a hand if you want to. Okay, and then erase the inside lines. Okay, and you've got a body. Let me do that again for you because I think you may have been confused watching that. I just have a feeling you're going, wait, stop, Jennifer. Let's try it again. Here's the head, okay? Here is the neck and then the leg, which is here. If you want to um, make a body like that, so you've got the middle part, you can do that if that makes sense. Here is the other leg coming here, the arms, boom, boom. And then what you do is add the meat so he's not looking like he's a skeleton. And then you can erase the arms or the lines inside. Okay, there you go. You've got your body, which is pressing up. Here's some hands up here, like he's pressing down the walls, trying to get out. You've got him pressing against the walls. Let me out, let me out! Okay, so from that point on, and you can do whatever you wanna do with the body. You can color the body or color the background. I chose to do white and black, it's up to you. So your next step is to choose your two colors. And I am going to make sure that all my X's are going to be blue. And I am going to color those. Notice how I'm using the marker, how I outline the shape first. And then I like to go in one direction. I'm hoping I don't see your X's and your O's, so make sure that you erase those, okay? And you continue to color everything in, the whole grid, and then you color the inside. And then at the very end, take your black marker. And here's my black marker, I'm missing it. Oh, I'm not happy right now. So, oh, here it is. And then you are going to go through, after everything is colored, 
and go over all of your lines in black, but that's after your color. Then at the end, you will have your finished project. But what am I missing on this? You have it, I am missing my name. So at the bottom in pencil or marker, please write your name. Hey, I hope all of you have a good week and I will see you next week. Have fun. I miss you.